Hello. Today we're going to take a look at what it takes to expose an API using Jitterbits Cloud Studio in our API manager software. So what we have here is a request where we're accepting a JSON structure and we're going to be transforming that as we save it to a Postgres database. So let's go ahead and create this from scratch. So we're going to go ahead and create a new workflow. I'm going to come in here, we're going to tell the system we're going to be expecting a request coming in via an API. And we're going to be saving that into a database. And um, here's one that we have set up already. And this gives you the ability to test this out as well. So it sends that request down to the agent to verify it has connection uh, to make sure that you know, during runtime it will be available. All right, so let's go ahead and choose the insert action. So we're going to be accepting that and inserting that into the system here. And we'll go ahead and configure this. So reaching out to the database, pulling back a list of tables that this user has access to. And right now we're just going to do the customer table. You could choose multiple tables if you have customers and you're also accepting contacts in the payload. You can actually accept that here as well and define the join type as it's writing it into the table as well. And then from here, we're gonna have a new transformation. So this is the, the table and the fields that are available in the database. And for the JSON structure, we're gonna go ahead and use a sample file. So this is one I've uploaded before, a very simple one. Uh, Jitterbit takes and breaks down and finds what fields are available to map to um, in that. Uh, you can actually, you know, if you have your own structure, you can absolutely upload that to the system. Uh, not an issue there. All right, from here, it is a drag drop exercise. So as you're going from left to the right, it is just uh, drag and dropping uh, the values, but it's not always, you know, sometimes you need to manipulate the data as it's going from your request into your target. So um, to, to help with that, we do have a full-fledged um, scripting engine here. So uh, we have over 250 different functions or things that you can do with the data as it's coming through. One of those examples would be like something like two upper here. Uh, is a good example. So say you need to change the case or truncate or something like that, you can absolutely do that. So it gives you an example how to use it and then also you can uh, pull it up here as well and then we'll go ahead and reference that function here. So let's, that looks good. Let's go back here. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and go return to workflow. And let's go ahead and give it a name. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and define the response that we're going to give. So this is only going to be inserting into one system. You could absolutely you know, accept the payload, write it to the database, then you know, write it to a different database or archive it or really whatever you wanna do during the flow um, is doable in this uh, operation chain as well. So let's go ahead and define the transformation here. And what we've got is a sample file. We're gonna go ahead and choose the response, uh, one that I've used before. And we're gonna go ahead and hard code that to true. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a name. All right, let's go ahead and tie these two together now. So on success, we're gonna run another operation. In that operation, we're gonna run API customer response success. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. And then we're gonna go ahead and reference an existing one for the on failure. So leveraging things that already exist is absolutely doable as well. So get as much reuse as we can. So example of what we're gonna see here. And then as we switch back to the form, shows you uh, the two that we've created. And then you can link over and see the one that we're referencing as well. All right, so this is complete. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and deploy this. So this is deploying the code up to Jitterbit Harmony platform so it can be actually run the agent. It doesn't create the URL from here. It's just uh, gonna expose it so that we can do that in the next step here once it's deployed.
All right, now that it's deployed, I'm gonna go ahead and over to my API manager and go to my APIs. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new API. I'm gonna call it create new DB customer. And this is telling it which environment. So different environments, so you can have different uh, prod, dev URLs as well. So we're gonna tell it this is my private agent that we're gonna be running on. Give it a version. You can also enable some other options as needed. Go ahead and do next. Now we're gonna choose the project that was in. And then we're gonna choose the um, API that we're gonna be calling or the operation that we're gonna be calling when that's called and what verbs we wanna support. Um, you can do different calls, you know, put, get, uh, things like that, or you can assign all. But I'm gonna go ahead and just do post and then where the response is coming from. Since we're using that final target, we're gonna go ahead and do final target. So we're gonna go ahead and assign that. So now we've got a new request out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do next. And you have the ability to assign a security profile from here. So this is, we support anonymous basic OAuth 2, um, but you can also, as part of your operation flow, do something more complicated. If you wanna hit it against up, uh, up against your LDAP server, or you have a custom database table that you wanna verify the credentials in before, we, you know, before proceeding, you can absolutely build that as part of your flow as well. It's kind of an overview of what we're going to create. So we have a URL that's going to be exposed. I'm going to go ahead and do save and publish. All right. So this URL is live, um, but we also generate the Swagger documentation for it as well. So you can take this URL, you put it in your application, and start developing against it. You could put it in a Postman, test it out, whatever it happens to be. But we're going to go ahead and do the generate Swagger documentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and do regenerate. So what this is doing is this is reaching out uh, to all the operations that I have exposed and it's creating a new Swagger document based on the structures that I have exposed to receive and as well as respond. So this is generating all that based on the metadata in the Harmony platform. All right, and here is that call that we've created. So as you can see, it gives you a sample request that you can use here and a sample response. So let's go ahead and test this out here. Let's just uh, keep it simple. I'm just gonna give it a name. And I'm gonna go ahead and execute that. So this is actually sending the payload up to Jitterbit's API manager. It's coming down to the agent, running that payload, and coming back with the response. So this is an example of curl, response, curl uh, command that was executed. Uh, what we got back as well. So we got a success, uh, there was some header information and a 200 code. So this is the Swagger documentation. There is also a portal. So if you're you know, having one team um, consume, you know, create these APIs and you're having another team maybe consume them, this is the API uh, portal that you would wanna give the people that just need to be able to see the, you know, the metadata around those. So um, again, we can come down here they can reference these, they can try them out all from this documentation. Uh, or you can, um, you know, give people access to come in. You know, if you are working with external comp, um, parties, you can actually create a user that just has access to come in and view these, um, these schemas. So other things that we do have, um, API logs. So based on what you're posting to, um, you can drill in, see where that's coming from, uh, you know, the data that's being sent, um, by default, we don't keep the payload. Uh, we just keep some metadata around it, but you can optionally uh, choose to you know, have that payload as part of the logs as well. And then from here, we can also look at analytics, you know, just kind of based you know, day over day, what do the trends look like, things like that. You can filter it down by you know, your environment, your APIs, uh, you know, if you're looking for specific static status codes. You can also check out response times and things like that as well to make sure you know, there's no places you need to fine tune um, to, to get better responses or something like that. And then finally, security profile. That's where if you, know, you need to go in and modify or change any of your security, you can do that as well.
All right, so this has been a brief overview of what it takes to create an API uh, using Jitterbit Cloud Studio and expose that as an API so that it can be called externally uh, from the systems. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.